too, when the accent was on kick rather than throw. In those days, you could not only get yourself into the park, you could bring your automobile along as well. The football played was a little more informal. The officials dropped around in whatever clothing they happened to be wearing. This fellow does the job in shirt sleeves. The football critics of that day referred to the strategy as two bucks and a kick. There's one, two. Fellas, you take it and see what you can do with it. But they had their thrills too. It's a touchdown and you can't beat that. Thrills today comes in and handles the on every play. The left half, the center half, and the right half form the top of the tee and do most of the ball carrying. The flying wing or blocking half plays on either side of the line and his job varies depending on the strategy of the play. Plays from the tee require split second timing. Here, the quarterback makes a complete turn to hand the ball to his center half. At the same time, this man comes out of the right side of interference for the ball carrier, who hopes the men on the left of the line make a hold. Well, let's go. Wait. Let's see if everything is progressing all right. Yes, there's the hole. And take a look at T formation deception. Bernie McDonnell drives into the line. It's a good plunge, but he hasn't got the ball. The handoff was a fake, and Andy Gordon throws a pass to Howie Turner, who's uncovered for a touchdown. And here is a play which depends for success on a well-timed block, another feature of today's game. You see, Ottawa Rough Riders' Howie Turner has the ball. And this man is the only obstacle between the touchdown. But flying wing Bob Paprath seems to know what to do. Whoops, sorry old boy, but you've just been handed that well-timed block we were talking. Well, go on, Howie, you're in the clear. Simple, isn't it? Let's try it again, play. The difference here is that instead of one, there are two men ganging up on Johnny Dangle, Rough Riders halfback. But we also have two aces in the hole this time. Flying wing, Joe Esquini. And center half, Tony Golab. Go ahead, fellas, show him. You see, another touchdown. Bob Cunningham catches it without breaking stride and runs for a Montreal touchdown. Two T formation teams emerged triumphant in the East and the West in 1949. Here are the Montreal Alouettes, Eastern champions, warming up before the championship game. And in the white uniforms, the Calgary Stampeders, Western representatives, and the defending Grey Cup champions. Canada's number one athlete for 1949, Frank Filchuk, wearing number 79, calls the Alouette plays. Keith Spaeth, number 48, quarterbacks these Stampeders, who are shown warming up in training camp after their arrival in the East. But the players didn't come East alone. Before the game, Eastern spectators once again saw another feature of the Grey Cup final, the colorful invasion by the Calgary supporters. They were back in bigger numbers and as colorful as ever for this year's classic. They danced, sang, made flapjacks and ate chocolate on Toronto streets. The day of the game, they paraded to City Hall for a civic reception. The Indians were the only Calgarians without Stetson. At the City Hall, Mayor McCollum was presented with this genuine handmade Western saddle. The mayor also officiated at the game when he kicked off for 40 yards to get things underway. The ball was held by Mayor-elect McKay of Calgary. Mayor Hood of Montreal looked on. And here are the coaches, Lou Heyman, Alouettes on the left, and Calgary's Les Lear. Now the teams are lined up for the kickoff, so here from the original Sweet Caps broadcast of the game are the highlights of the Grey Cup Finals. 
Mel Wilson moving up to the ball. There's the kickoff, and it's a spiral ball, and it goes down to the left end where it's taken by Ralph Tui. And Tui goes 5'10", about nine yards before he is finally pulled down. First break of the game comes when Spade, standing on his own 20, kicks to Alouette. And there's the kick. It's a high spiral ball. It's going, going, going. It goes to Wagner. Bounces away from him. It's bouncing crazily on the gridiron. Wagner picks it up momentarily and he loses it. There's a fumble. And it's recovered by Calgary. Rodler Matheson recovers that fumble of Wagner's. And it'll be first and ten for the Calgary Stampeders. Calgary's Kwong picks up three yards off tackle. Now from the 34-yard line. Spread formation, the Stampeders out of the line. Shifts in, there's two men playing wide on the flanker spot. That foot in motion again. It looks like a pass coming up. It isn't. It's a plunging back to Paul Rowe. He goes through center five, ten, and about 14 yards. George Festigia making the tackle. Rowe picks up a first down. That was around a five, ten, close to 14 yards for Paul Rowe. Right over center, and they're getting close to pay dirt. Wilson is over the ball. It's first and ten on the Stampeder 17. The handoff is to Harry Hood. Over center again. And he is stopped by Eagle Keys, who was backing up the line. And there was a gain of six yards on the play. Wilson over the ball again. Spaith in the quarterback slot. The handoff is to Rowe. Rowe plunges to the one-yard line, and he's almost over. He was stopped by Phil Chalk. Rowe was just a yard from Pater. Uh-oh, there's a horn on the play. Let's see if we can pick up that penalty for you. We'll wait for the official. Illegal interference is the is the decision against the Stampeders. And the ball is on the Alouette's 21 now. We're going to run this play. There's foot in motion. And it's going to be a pass. I think there's a horn on the play. I thought I heard it. There's the long, long pass in Jennifer Hood. It's going, going, going. And it is incomplete. It was on the goal line. It was knocked down by Chalk. And after an exchange Montreal of kicks, Montreal scrimmages on their own 25-yard line. Mickey Hi-Hash finally caught him. Ralph Tui cut in from the left lot. And he was in the middle there, and Bill Chalk hit him. So this is the Alouette's first big scoring chance. Here's the team formation again. And this time, it's a line play. It's right through there. Costa Riga, and he's going to the five-yard line. Costa Riga, right over center. Close to that goal line. Not quite five, I'd say. It's about uh, eight yards to go. down. Virgil Wagner. McCance's kick is good. Make for Montreal six. Calgary, nothing. Here's a kickoff, and it's a short kick, and Norm Hill is going after that up hard. Everybody was onside, and it's fumbled into touch, where it is picked up by Herb Trowick. Nobody's kicked. And just three plays later, again, Phil Chalk has it. It's going to be a pass. He dropped back. There goes the pass. It's in Denver cutting out a long run. It's going, going, and he's got it on the five. He's over for a touchdown. Cunningham. The convert by McCants is washed up. So the score remains 11-0. Then early in the second quarter, Montreal comes up with two first downs to their own 40. Montreal in their key formation. Frank Phil Chuck, the quarterback, and he's fading back for a pass. And he throws it. And oh, he jumps high in the air. And it's intercepted. Intercepted by Calgary. By Vern Graham. The ball bounced out of the hands of Cunningham into the hands of Vern Graham. And Calgary are in possession on their own 50-yard line. Paul Rowe loses two yards when trapped by Tui behind the line. So it's Calgary second down on their own 48. But the sun is shining. It's a great day for a great football game. 11 to nothing is the score. Montreal on top. Getting ready for the snap now. And it's back to Keith Spade, fading back to the 40 for a pass over to the side. And it's good to Harry Hood. And Hood's up at the center stripe at the Montreal 50. And he's thrown in a touch. At the Montreal 50 by Virgil Wagner. But it's good. Then after two incomplete forward passes, on the Calgary 50-yard line gets the ball, gets the kick away nicely, just in time. And it's down to the 10-yard line, bounds over the head of Wagner. Wagner fumbles it over the goal line. Now he'll have to get out. No, he's running into touch and goal for a point. And just before halftime, Sam Peters put on their big drive from the Montreal 52. The quarterback gets the ball fading back. He's going to toss a pass. He does over to this side to Woody Strode. And Strode has sent it a touch over here. And he has They plunge and pass to the Montreal 17. Keith Spade standing right almost underneath him. Gets the ball. And he fakes. That's an underhand pass over to Pete Sotis. Sotis coming around the right side. Down to the 15. And he's still going. And he's down to the but the five, four-yard line. And a pileup. A great run by Pete Sotis before he was stopped by Jack Harper. Riley Matheson 
Did the blocking. Made a big hole for Pete Sotis. They're up there coming in. The fans are going wild. Keith Smith gets it and he gives it again. And they dive through the left side of that line. But it holds. Ron T just kept on him there. Here comes Doug Turner's up over the ball. Keith Smith ready to take it from him. Keith Smith gets it and gives it a hand up to Harry Hood around the left side. Hood trying to get over. And Hood goes over. The score is 11 to 6. Ball is snapped back. It's held there by Spaith. He kicks it. It's perfect right through the center. And the score is 11 to 7. Montreal, and Alouette. Exactly four 11. plays later, Calgary when Alouette Peters, kicked to Calgary, it's Stampeders' first down on their own 38. It's their deep formation. And it's picked up by Aaron Krovick. And Krovick is going down for a touchdown. He's over. His face didn't see Big Herb Trawick busting through there, and Spaith had his hand up as if to toss that ball. It was knocked out of his hand, and Big Herb Trawick weighs 230 pounds, big colored boy for on the line for Montreal, broke through, scooped the ball up. A couple of tacklers tried to get him. He uh, pulled them about five yards. Finally, they lost their grip. Harry Hood was the tackler, and he went over for a touchdown, making the score 16 to seven as he attempted convert by Chess McCann, and it's good. 17 to 7, and again the Montreal Alouettes have taken a 10 point lead. Well, set to go. There's the whistle. Timing has been called, and we're on our way. There's the kickoff. Oh, it's a high, long ball. It's going to throw on his 10. He's on the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35. He was hit. He was really hit that time. Rowe was set up hard by Ralph Tui. Left end for the about midway in the third quarter. Calgary are on the Montreal 34. It's second down and three yards to go. Second and one, three yards short of a down. This is the third down. It's Faith again. He's looking for his receiver. There it goes. The pass is to a hat and it's intercepted by Filcher. And he's got a clear field. He's at midfield. He's at the 45. He looks and he laterals on the far side. Where it's taken by Keith Inglis. And they bobble it. It's a fumble and it's recovered by Calgary. Well, what do you know? What do you know? Mother told me there'd be days like this. Phil Jock lateraled. And it was lateral back to Phil Jock. And on the second lateral, it was fumbled and recovered by Keith Spade. So it's first and ten. Shift is to the left. Spade fakes a drop. Oh, and he's hit from behind, and he is tackled hard. And after a quick kick by Pantages, it's Montreal first down on Calgary's 52. First and ten, Montreal's ball. On Calgary's 52. It's Phil Chalk dropping back. There goes the pass. A long one. It's going for a touchdown if it's good. And it's intercepted by Pantages on his own 15. He's on the 20. But the whistle is gone. He was down. He got up and started to run. And the fans are really a hollering. Listen. But interference was called on Pantages and the pass was ruled complete. On the next play, Wagner picks up three yards and the ball is on Calgary's 15. One and Pantages the other. It's Phil Chalk again. It's going to be another pass straight down the middle. It's good. And it's the Tui. Almost on the goal line. He's stopped by Thotis. About two yards short of Pater. The handoff is to Cunningham. He can't make it. And he's held for no gain. It'll be another crack. Here it goes again. The handoff is to Wagner. And Wagner is hit. He's over. He bounces off Anderson and gets over for a touchdown. And Montreal. McCance's convert makes the score 23-7 for Montreal. Stan Peters, McCann's doing the kicking. There's the kick. It's a long one. And there's a fan on the field out there. And uh, the ball rolls to Pantage. He's on the 5. He's on the 10-yard, the 15. And he is hit, but he keeps right on going. He's on the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40. And he's in the clear of the one man. And he is pulled down at center field. Pantage. Stan Peters marched to the 14-yard line where it's third down and a yard to go. One-yard gain. It was all that's necessary. Pantages line. He's good and back. He may lose possession. We'll see. Pantages was up there. It may have made it. We'll see. It's going to be close. They may call for the measurements. It is not a first down. That could have been the turning point. Quarter. Montreal's McKenzie attempts a placement from the Calgary 29. A field goal. McKenzie is going to kick it. It's a beautiful kick. It's good. It's good. A beautiful kick. The placement is good for three points. Montreal 26. Calgary 7. Calgary second down on their own 43. Sugarfoot Anderson, and it's an underhand pass over to Thotis, and he's down at the 45 to the 50 to the center stripe, and he's sending a touch over at the Montreal 52-yard line. A nice play. Now it's Stampeders third down on their own 44. And kick formation with Spade back almost on the center stripe. He, got, he kicks, 
He gets a beautiful spiral away down to Cunningham. Cunningham takes it running back towards the goal line. He's on about the one now, and he has to step into touch. He's sent in there. Out of the huddle, up onto the ball in their T formation. Frank Philchuk in the quarterback, gets the ball, gives it on a handoff, and the running player out. Cunningham is smothered behind the goal line, and that'll be... That makes the score Montreal 26, Calgary 9, and the team scrimmage on the 25-yard line. On that play, there was a fumble behind the line, and Sugar for Anderson has picked it up, and he's over for a touchdown. Perfect, right through the center, and it's 26 to 15. Later, Montreal picks up two more points. One when McCants' attempted placement goes for a single, and Kiek kicks one point, making the 5-15. But the game is over. The fans just swarm onto the gridiron. The boats are being carried off now, and it's a terrific milling crowd. They're coming out of the bleachers. They're coming out of the grandstand, out onto the field. And we have signs. We have the Grey Cup already printed in advance, and they're showing them now. The Montreal signs, placards are being hoisted high in there. The players are just not able to get off the field. Sugarfoot Anderson of the Calgary Stampeders is being... And so the 1949 Grey Cup final goes down in history. But in high school dressing rooms across the land, the names of Phil Jock, Spaeth, Wagner, Rowe, Cunningham and others will be names to remember for years to come. Today, boys like these all across the country are champions in the making, learning to play hard, fast, clean football. Tomorrow, they will take their places in the Parade of Champions.